glasses our reading glasses and make sure we're coming out live and we are hello hello good morning everyone this is Shisho and welcome to another live stream today today is February 15th 2021 and we're doing our math tutoring session approximately number 70 <laughs> we'll go with that we're gonna do uh, basically making myself available for a couple hours uh, every couple of weeks I guess probably twice a month uh, to uh, do a little mathematics on charter days how are you doing it chicho hope you are well i've been looking forward to this awesome awesome on charter days me too me too i've been doing um some spreadsheet work in the background and there is a little thing a little short segment that i do want to cover today um because i'm gonna pull that extract that out of the live stream and have it as a standalone video so we can reference it and it's relation to personal finance investing in personal finance and uh directly linked up with the stuff that we're doing regarding comic books which we're going to do that stream in three days right so i'm doing a little bit of prep work for that for that stream and uh speedy gonzalez style um just because it popped up as a reminder to me to let the word out right free assange free assange free assange julian assange is a publisher and journalist that is being crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capital's power to humanity for more information see our wikileaks and julian um uh, see wikileaks.org and our julian assange and wikileaks playlist and um we'll wait up until notifications to go out on charter days is there stuff that you really want to talk about with uh, mathematics I hope you're, uh, if I remember correctly, you're going through some stuff right now. So we'll definitely, uh, we can definitely cover some of that stuff. Um, and again, there's a, there's a short little about 15 minute segment that I do want to do uh, regarding return on investment and compound interest and calculating um, annualized uh, return on investment as well that we're going to need. There are basically two, three numbers that we're going to have entered in uh, our uh, our spreadsheets basic algebra yeah yeah because we did uh, negative numbers last time right and that helped you out i'm assuming because uh, you mentioned that uh, you grasped it so that was good and w while we wait until uh, for people to roll in let me give uh, my little intro um, because sometimes notifications don't go out for a while <laughs> and uh we we wait about uh, 10 10 minutes or so laugh out loud tony hello hello how are you doing welcome welcome to another live stream gang if you want to follow this work this is the core essence of what my work is about which is mathematics you can follow the work on patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o if you want to support this work patreon is a great way to do so if you want to follow this work patreon is a great way to do so I don't put anything behind paywalls everything's creative commons share and share alike and for those of you that were supporting this work on patreon thank you very much for the support gang we are live streaming on twitch twitch.tv forward slash chicho live c-h-y-c-h-o-l-i-v-e if you want to participate in the chat in the discussion while the live streams are taking place uh twitch is where you want to be at good morning gina how are you doing i hope you're doing well and for those of you that were supporting this work obviously of course thank you very much for the support thank you for coming out to these live streams thank you for the bits thank you for the subs thank you for the follows thank you for participating in the discussion and the mods when they pop in thank you very much for being here gang mal maladras too how are you doing cheers cheers i do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on mines hello vk gap parlor is just coming back online i couldn't log on but i should be able to soon enough and uh, twitter and you can follow the work there we do share some additional information there basically using it as a and those as platforms to announce what it is that we are doing but we do have a discord page where a lot of people are, are participating in discussion and you can come to our twitch channel anytime you want type in social and all the links will pop up here to the announcement platforms and at the bottom here is our discord link that uh, you can join and participate in discussion 
and we've got a lot of different folders there right channels and you can choose what it is that you want to participate in uh, in regards to the discussion and we do have a math folder there and science folder and technology we haven't had a physics one yet but i guess that goes in math uh, but if the need arises we will and uh, for live streams where we don't have any visuals we will today we do upload the audio to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho chicho and it should be available those audio files podcasts should be available on your favorite podcasting platform including spotify and itunes and we will be uploading this video and segments of it to sensor to bitchute rumble and if we have enough coins and odyssey we'll load up odyssey as well we do have a channel there as well uh, but for sure they're going to go on sensor tube bit shoot and rumble and for those of you that are supporting this work on those platforms thank you very much for the support and if you are on sensor tube you can support this work by joining youtube membership or sensor tube membership and for those of you who join sensor tube membership thank you very much for the support gang aside from that let's take the stuff down uncharted ace basic algebra let me do a little check i think notifications are slowly going out but let me pull this down uncharted ace now i i sort of made this little announcement at the beginning that there's a little bit of short segment that i need to make today during our math stream that's going to be linked up with asmr mathematics with investing in personal finance with investing in comic books that we're going to do in four days on thursday i believe right so i'm putting the spreadsheets together and there's a couple of calculations three calculations that we're doing that uh, i want to go over the mathematics of it just speedy gonzalez style right and they are stuff that we've already talked about i've already put out videos extensive videos on them one of them is compound interest. Let me link this up and I'll provide a link in the description of the video as well. This is the compound interest formula that we're gonna be using for investing in comic books in four days that we're gonna be talking about, uh, formulas that we used up in the spreadsheet, as well as return on investment, which is this video here, okay, uh, that we're gonna be referencing. So those are two things that I just wanna cover Speedy Gonzalez style. Aside from that, uncharted days you want to do basic algebra right we did adding and subtracting negative numbers multiplying negative numbers i believe we did multiplying negative numbers as well right sem 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 stover 12 thank you very much for the follow um we did the negative numbers are you cool with the negative numbers and by the way gang no matter what we're talking about if you have math questions drop the math questions in chat and we'll get to them right math supersedes anything else that we are doing okay so we're here to do mathematics yeah i think so okay so negative numbers are covered right adding and subtracting you're cool with are you cool with adding and subtracting decimals numbers that have decimals and multiplying numbers that have decimals should we cover that as well or are you good with that let me know if you're good with that we can just go into straight up multiplication and long division okay and then once we've covered we've already covered adding and subtracting right then we cover multiplying and dividing we can go into how to move around an equal sign which basically kicks you into algebra and once you know how to move around an equal sign your gold your money adding yes but not subtracting and multiplying okay let's do this on chart today so adding straight up right let's cover the adding part right just speedy gonzalez adding when you're adding two numbers it really depends if they have decimals or not but you're lining things up based on their tens right based on their position right so let's say we're adding two five seven six plus seven four two right i'm covering i know you said adding you're okay with but subtracting is just adding negative numbers so we'll cover adding and then we'll flip it for the subtracting right if you're adding these two numbers then what you do this is the one positions the tens the hundreds the thousands you line them up according to their position right so if you're going to add these two numbers you go two five seven six and that's the two four seven right four uh seven four two you line them up when you're adding them you add 
6 plus 2 is 8, 7 plus 4 is 11. If you get anything over 9, you got to carry over to the next level because that's 10 plus, right? So 4 uh, and 7 is 11. You put the 1 here and the 10 goes up here. And then you got 6 and 7 is 13. You put 1 here, 3. So that's adding them. Now, what if you had decimals in this, right? What if this was 25.76 plus 74.2, right? Same digits, but a decimal added, all right? Then what you're really doing is you're adding based on the decimal, you're lining up the decimal, because that is exactly what you were doing here, right? You're lining up based on the decimal, but the decimal is invisible because we don't have anything past the decimal. Right? So the decimal for these guys is here and here and here and here, right? So we're lining up on the decimal. So if you're doing this, then you line them up 0.76 plus 74.2, right? Now, anything in the decimal that you don't have numbers for, like this goes two decimal places, this only has one decimal place. So what you have here is really just a zero, okay? You, it's an invisible zero. So all you do, you go six plus zero is six. 7 plus 2 is 9. Place your decimal place there, right? Nine, uh, f uh, 5 plus 4 is 9. 2 plus 7 is 9. Wow, cool number. 99.96. Easy peasy, right? Let's do subtracting. Subtracting. So let's assume we're subtracting these two numbers again. 2, 5, 7, 6. Um, minus 742 okay so again you line them up based on the decimal the invisible decimal that we had here is also present here right because these are the single digits these are the tens right the hundreds and the thousands right so when you're subtracting you want to line it up with the higher number the bigger number up top right with adding it doesn't make a difference with subtracting it does you want the bigger number up top two five seven six and you're going to subtract seven four two right and what you do is you go six minus two is four seven minus seven minus six minus two is four seven minus four is three and then you're going to go five minus seven but you can't take seven away from five right so whenever you're subtracting when the above number right it's smaller than the lower number whatever you're taking away from the above number what you end up doing you borrowing one you borrow a 10 from the next number that's higher up right so it's not really a 10 for this one it's a hundred because this is the hundred position so you're bringing a thousand over but think of it as borrowing a factor of 10 right so seven minus you know seven minus five uh five minus seven you can't take seven away from five so you borrow one from the two so the two becomes a one and five becomes a 15. so borrowing one from the next number up means you're adding 10 to this one so 15 minus 7 is 8 and then you have a one here so the answer is this doohickey right here okay cool so that's this one let's do this one but subtraction right let's go four let's go if it was two five point seven six minus seven four point two right again with subtracting you need to line up the decimals right i'll make the decimals bigger so you see them <laughs> it's got to be pronounced right so you're going to line things up with the decimal but the rule stands when you're subtracting numbers when you're doing them this way you put the bigger number up top and subtract the smaller number even though we're going against or not against but sort of manipulating our first mantra in mathematics which is the sign in front of the number goes with the number right but this is a sort of a mental note that you're going to make because what you're going to remember is if this was 25 minus 74 then you're subtracting a bigger number from a smaller number your answer is going to be negative so automatically you should remember that your answer is going to be negative because you're taking away a bigger number from a smaller number right 
but we still want to make the bigger number digit wise anyway on the top so you're not going to write this as 25.76 plus 7 or minus 74.2 you're going to write this as 74.2 minus 25.76 okay now remember this is flip of what this is so what we're gonna keep a note of mental note of that whatever the answer is that we're gonna get here is gonna be negative right if you want smaller numbers look at this let's assume we had here that's four let's go five or an aside right if you had three plus five that's an eight right if you have five plus three that's an eight right now what if you had three minus five and what if you had five minus three well five minus three is just two we know that right but three minus five we should know this by now the answer is negative two but if you're going to do the subtraction like this which you need to do when you're dealing with bigger numbers you need to put the bigger number up top and subtract the bottom number and remember mental note that the bigger number was negative so your answer is going to be negative so what you're really doing is doing this you're going five minus three that's two but two is not the answer to this because the bigger number was the bigger number was negative so the answer is really negative two okay you make a mental note of it that's exactly the way you're going to treat this so if you're subtracting these you're lining up your decimal now remember anything after the last digit after the last decimal point right you can add a zero if you don't want to have an empty spot there right because what you're about to do is do this you're going to go six take six away from zero well you can't take six away from zero right zero minus six doesn't work because zero is zero zero is a smaller number than six so what you need to do is do exactly what we did here is go to the next number and borrow a 10 value right so 10 comes over 10 plus zero is 10 so now you're going to go 10 minus 6 is 4 okay and then you go to the next number you go 7 mi 1 minus 7 well you can't take 7 away from 1 it doesn't work so you got to go to the next number and borrow 1 so you go to the 4 make this a 3 so you're always kicking it down by 1 the next number when you borrow it and then you're adding the 10 to 1 which makes it 11 so usually you're just adding a one right in front of whatever that number was there previously so 11 minus 7 is 4 put your decimal in place and then you're going to go 3 minus 5 well you can't take 5 away from 3 same problem right so what we need to do is borrow one from the 7 and turn the 3 into 13 so if we take one away from 7 that becomes a 6 and this becomes a 13 13 minus 5 is an 8 6 minus 2 is 4 now the question is is 25.76 minus 74.2 48.44 well it's not because this is the bigger number this is negative 74.2 so we know the answer is negative so that becomes your answer to this subtraction I went through this pretty fast our charter days but the foundation the 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 step-by-step -step process is there does this help you out does that make sense do you have any questions regarding this or anyone else for that matter because what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go through the speedy Gonzalez to a certain degree speedy Gonzalez right we're doing the subtraction we've done the addition we're gonna do multiplication and we're gonna do division okay awesome on charter days we're gonna do division and before we go into talking about how to move around an equal sign we're gonna do what the little segment that we need to do because all you need is addition subtraction multiplication and division to be able to do personal finance investing to calculate return on investment crazy right um, 
you do need exponents as well for compound but we'll wait up on that okay so I'm gonna take this down so that's subtraction let's talk about multiplication okay let's talk about multiplication now the first thing you have to understand about multiplication is multiplication is an extension of addition right or multiply the tops and bottoms with tens to remove decimals um, yes and no right if you have an equal sign as long as you do it to both sides of the equation you're okay with that right because whatever you do on one side you can do to the other side but if you're simplifying you can't just multiply the numbers by 10 because you're kicking up the numbers by magnitude of 10 right so you're not going to get the final answer right the legit answer by the way gangs i apologies about if i don't catch up thank you for the follows thank you for the subs if you're subbing and thank you for the follows uh when i'm not catching them. technically i'll multiply by one okay it might be making it a little bit more difficult 10 over 10 sure uh but it's extra step work that you need to do once you start doing and adding and subtracting with decimals and whatnot um, it just becomes routine right that extra step might help you out initially but in the long run you're going to eliminate it it's like having training wheels on a bike right once you learn how to ride a bike you know initially when you're learning you might have little training wheels where you're not you know you don't wobble over and hurt yourself when you're a little kid but once you learn how to ride a bike those training wheels really slow you down yeah i just like to do things in weird ways okay waltz nor words so check this out let's do multiplication multiply multiply okay now look multiplication is an extension of addition one thing I keep on saying is mathematicians are some of the laziest people you meet in the world because they like to simplify things. They like to make things speedy Gonzalez so they don't have to spend too much time processing simple information. They want to move on to the more complicated stuff, right? So they've come up with shorthand and all this jazz, right? Slick Mick, how are you doing? I feel like math is in my school was more about solving the problems and not learning why I was doing all, all this. Yeah, it's. Uh, it, it, they weren't even teaching you how to solve problems they're they're in general they're teaching you uh, just like a monkey you know a monkey see monkey do do this do this do this you get this and they don't even tell you to look at the final answer to say does that even make sense right which we will be doing which we will be doing right now take a look at this multiplication is an extension of addition so just imagine if you had this two plus two plus two plus two right what's four twos added together well four six eight that's eight right but a simpler way to do this is take your addition symbol rotate it right take your addition symbol rotate it four to five degrees you get a multiplication symbol right that's what multiplication is the symbol represents and what that means is you're mul you're adding the same number multiple times right that's what the definition of multiplication is so instead of writing 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 is equal to 8 I can go 2 times 4 is equal to 8 which really means add 2 together 4 times right that's all it is okay that was my experience of that right think of that right multiplication is not something magic something really necessarily novel that's been introduced in mathematics it's just a faster way of doing addition okay as far as how to multiply you do it this way let's assume what was the last number we had two five i forget what it was it was two five seven four no it wasn't seven four seven two i think or something else let's go three two times seven four something something one two one two all right no that was too big i think it was only three numbers we had four two i believe right i'm pretty sure i got these two numbers wrong okay now if you have a three digit number multiply sorry four digit number multiplied by a three digit number 
this is what you do and this is the process that you do for any digit number multiplied by any digit number and before we do this one let me give you a quick little and first of all you need to you know your 10 by 10 multiplication table so if you don't know it learn it your 10 by 10 multiplication table learn it one two three four and then one two three four learn your 10 by 10 multiplication table it will save yourself a lot of time a lot of headache okay really essential if we're doing this type of multiplication I'm assuming you know your multiplication table and we have a full-blown video out there ASMR math video out there talking about the multiplication table it's like an hour long or 40 minutes long or something like this of how to I, I don't even know if it's about memorization it's basically putting it into your algorithm your program to be able to know how to multiply right seriously I can't emphasize this enough the first thing I tell all my students learn your multiplication table right m i one three five thank you very much for the twitch prime sub okay really gang just go chicho multiplication table okay the video will pop up learn it learn it learn it okay now just imagine if we're multiplying three four digits with three digits but before we do that let's do two digits by one digit or two digit by two digit so you see how the process works all right so here's question one but let's do a simpler one first let's go let's do question two first right let's assume we had two five three actually let's go two digits two digits times two digits right math is good but a plus b equals c is hard a squared plus b squared equals c squared kenny kenny roberts are you talking about pythagorean theorem exponents kicks it up a notch but we'll talk about it uh, if not in this live stream in another live stream if we're gonna build basic algebra as uncharted ace wants uh we'll get into exponents maybe even in this in this one right so if we're multiplying you line them up line them up again on top of each other just the same way you did addition subtraction but with multiplication it really doesn't make a difference if the smaller number is up top or the bigger number up top ideally though put the bigger number up top right 25 times 12. okay with multiplication what you do you do this you go this multiplies all the digits there and that multiplies all the digits there so 2 times 5 is 10. you put the zero here you put the one up top if you get any number above nine when you're multiplying two numbers together tenth value kicks up right two times two is four and then you add the top number which makes it five right now think about this what's two times 25 it's 50 right but you're doing it piecemeal and then you move on to the next number one right now if you're in this position and by the way with multiplication is ridiculous and addition and subtraction it's ridiculously important to line things up properly mathematics is about symmetry really line things up properly it, that's the way mathematics was developed to be extremely visual any language is very visual right so someone if someone asks you to spell the word apple right you're gonna go apple right that way that person can read it right if someone says write down the word apple you're not gonna go apple because it's not visually that's extremely difficult for your mind to process and we come up with languages to help help us to process things faster to retain information right to be able to make connections so you want to make it easier for your mind to be able to do things instead of harder for your mind to be able to do things right keep this in mind i've seen a lot of people do a lot of mathematics where they're extremely messy it's the equivalent of writing apple in that chaotic way it's like no 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 first order of business learn your multiplication table second order of business tighten up your work right line things up properly when you line things up properly we've already did the two multiplication now we've got to go to the one and as before this number multiplies that number and that number but 
because this is in the tenth position when you go one times five you don't put it here you put it here and that's a five and what people usually do you add a zero here okay just to remember that you're starting in the second position right so one times five is five there is no carryover so this one is no longer there you have to make a mental note of that right and then one times two is two and then you draw the line and what did we say multiplication is really addition and the addition does come into play in multiplication here when you get down to this level you add these numbers zero plus zero is zero five plus five is ten you put the zero here carry the one and that's three so 25 times 12 is 300 okay let's do the bigger number two five three two times seven four two same process okay two times two is four two times three is six two times five is ten you put a zero and carry the one two times two is four add the one you get five is that cool the process is the same right i'm just doing it a little bit faster right and then you move on to the four but this isn't really four in terms of value it was 40 it's in the tenth position so because we moved here you line this up when you multiply the four times two the result comes here but when you moved over one put a zero there put a place marker there so you know where you are right you don't want to when you're doing mathematics when you're doing algebra you want to reduce the amount of information you have to retain in your mind so i always say use the pen and paper as your assistant right make notes on the sides of whatever it is that you're doing if you need to remember where you are and what you need to do next right putting a zero as a place marker guarantees that you don't make a mistake to go four times two is eight and put the eight there because that's already taken right so four times two is eight you put the eight here four times three is twelve you put the two here and you carry the one four times five is twenty at the one you get twenty one and then you carry the two up top right because the one is gone right four times two is eight you add the two you get ten okay cool now we're into the third number well if we're into the third number that lines up here this and this are going to be zero okay then do your multiplication seven times two is 14 you put the four here you carry the one seven times three is 21 add the one you get 22 you put two here and you carry the two up top seven times five is 35 add two you get 37 seven and you carry a three seven times two is 14 add the three you get 17. And then what do you do with these numbers? Ideally, ideally, you lined everything up properly. Really, line everything up properly, gang. It's visual. Mathematics is visual. People, I've seen people do this. When they're, when they're doing this part, they got five, four, here, five, zero, six, four. And then they got zero, eight, two, one, zero, one. And then they got zero zero four two seven seven one. How are you gonna add this? <laughs> really? How are you gonna add this? If you need to add these guys, it's the same numbers. You gotta go. Okay, those guys add. Those guys add. These guys add. These guys add. These guys add. These guys add. And that goes there. Man, that's a nasty way. Your mind just becomes confused right when you draw the lines it's pretty straightforward but you're not going to sit there and draw lines to line things up all the time right what you need to do is line it up right off the get-go four plus zero plus zero is four six plus eight is 14 and that's a zero it doesn't change anything so 14 you put the four carry the one one plus zero is one plus two is three plus four is seven 
5 plus 1 is 6, plus 2 is 8, 0 plus 7 is 7, 1 plus 7 is 8, and that's a 1. 2,532 times 742 is, you can put a little commas here if you want to be able to read it properly, 1,878,744. Right? Easy peasy. Now, what if this had decimals? Let me take these off so we don't get them confused as decimals. Right? What if this had decimals? Okay. What if this had decimals? Let's assume this guy had decimals. When you're multiplying numbers, you don't have to line up the decimals the way you did when you were adding numbers. When you're adding numbers, you need to line up the decimals to be able to add them. And subtracting, you need to line up the decimals when you're subtracting numbers, right? Remember, the bigger number always on top. Keep a mental note which number was negative. If the bigger number was negative, your answer is going to be negative. If the bigger number was positive, your answer is going to be positive, right? When you're subtracting numbers. So if you have decimals in your multiplication, you don't need to... Uh, line up your decimals you just add the total number of decimals at the end and place them there so for example what if this was 2.5 times 1.2 so this was 2.5 times 1.2 they line up but that doesn't matter to us because we're not lining up the decimals what we do is we add the total number of decimal places we have now this confuses some people when I say you add the total number of decimal places you have, you're starting off at this location, the position where you're right beside the ones, right? And you're going, okay, if the decimal was there, that's one, that's two decimal spots. So you add two decimal spots. So 2.5 times 1.2 is 3.00, which is just three, right? Let's add the decimal spot. Instead of adding it here, let's add it here and here. So how many decimal spots do we have? If it's 0.25 times 0.12, we have one, two, three, four decimal spots, right? Well. Over here, we multiply them without the decimals. We don't care, right? If we take these decimals away, right? And then we have four decimal spots. So we start off with the decimal is, is an invisible decimal. And then we go one, two, three. We don't have any more numbers, but we do another jump. We put the decimal there. If we have any blank spots, we put zeros. Okay. So 0.25 times 0.12 is 0 0.03. And you don't need these two decimal spots there because zeros after the last digit in a decimal is unnecessary, right? So let's add decimals here. Let's assume this was 2.532 times 7.4, right? So we don't need to redo our multiplication we don't we, because we didn't have to line up the decimals right if we're lining these up if we're adding then this would have been 2.532 plus 7.42 you line them up right but that's not what we're doing we're multiplying if we're multiplying we add the num we multiply the numbers as if there was no decimal and then we count the number of decimal places we have total let's check it out one, two, three, four, five decimal spots, right? So we start off with the decimal place is. So we go one, two, three, four, five. Two point five three two times seven point four two is eighteen point seven eight seven four four. Is that clear? Does that work? I hope so. Does that work on Charter Days? And anybody else, any questions regarding this? Yes, that is a massive help. Awesome on Charter Days. Thank you very much for the uh, follows Gang Square. 
1996 and those are some other follows that pop through but I didn't want to break the train of thought on there so appreciate the follows gang let's go to dividing once we do dividing we're gonna go to return on investment in personal finance so we can set up our work that we're gonna do when we talk about investing in comic books in four days <laughs> nice let's do division let's do division very nice division is just an extension of multiplication which is an extension of addition so they teach you everyone I, they even taught me this is the way they taught me they said this is addition this is subtraction this is multiplication and this is division what they didn't tell you was all of these things are really just addition right subtraction is just adding negative numbers right multiplication is just multiplying adding mul the same number multiple times and division is the flip of multiplication right you're because for everything you can do in mathematics you can undo almost okay that's not the way it works in the in in the physical world right try to break a glass cup right very difficult to put it back together right for everything that is done in the material world you can't necessarily undo in mathematics it's beautiful you can almost undo everything that you did i have forgot everything in mathematics almost <laughs> micro micro twist i was good once upon a time i'm horrible a uh, brother or sister or micro twist one of the reasons i got into teaching tutoring mathematics was because i was very disappointed that i forgot a lot of mathematics that i had already learned so i got into teaching mathematics uh, as a hobby to relearn my high school mathematics because i really didn't want the i really didn't want to lose that power that i had it's like practicing a natural language that you might know if you speak more than one or two languages right you need to practice it to retain the ability to speak it so i got into tutoring mathematics to make sure i didn't forget how to do my mathematics because i knew it was ridiculously important in the real world right crafter how are you doing welcome welcome now Let's do division. Division. Division? Division. Jean. Division. Division. My spelling sucks right now. I go through periods where my spelling is good and my spelling is bad. Woke J. Lad. Woke. Woko. Woko. How are you doing? Division. Let's assume we have the following. And by the way, gang, division is really just about fractions, right? But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to teach you long division, okay? Because fractions, when we get into fractions, we're going to talk about prime numbers. And prime numbers, we're going to do in another step. I just want to teach you the process of long division right now. And the reason I want to teach you this is because a lot of people say, oh, you don't need to learn long division. And a lot of, a lot of teachers actually, you don't need to, a lot of math, a lot of people that do it, you don't need to learn math, uh, long division. I'm like, dude, learn long division it's an exercise for the mind it's good for the brain it's like doing pull-ups and chin-ups okay i had been uh micro -tose. i had been talking shit all semester till one month before summer break and my teacher said i can't let you pass you haven't done anything okay i said if i do the entire book and pass all the tests will i pass yes he said i finished the entire mathematics a book in one month and pass all the tests yeah and if you're in school and if you've been through school you know that they take 10 months to teach you some things in the earlier years things that especially mathematics right uh, that you could probably do in a month right in grade 12 it, they take you they take about 10 months to teach you something that you could learn in about two months so if you bunker down and you know 
there's pluses and minuses of going to school there's social activity this that 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 all that jazz but if you want to go through schooling education your basic education speedy gonzalez style just teach yourself educate yourself you can go and challenge test and get stuff done right and gang don't forget free assange free assange free assange julian assange is a publisher and journalist that is being crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity for more information see wikileaks.org or check out our julian assange and wikileaks playlist on sensor tube let's do long division let's assume we had this two five three two over seven four two we wanted to divide these two numbers okay and i'm going to do the basic long division right now we're not going to go into the the other uh more intricate stuff that can happen is because as long as you got the basic long division down your money right your gold if you're going to do this the way you lay it out and again mathematics is very visual lay it out and I sh actually, I should do a simpler number first, by the way. Let me do a simpler number first. Let's assume, so this is one. Let's do question two first. What did we have before? Uh, 12, I want to do 2, 5, 3 divided by uh, 4. Let's do that. Okay. So 253 divided by 4. This is the way you lay it out. You draw your little, what are you going to call this? laying down l with the pointer sticking down right you put the four on here you put the two five three here okay give yourself enough room and when you're laying down the work again talking about apple if you're going to write the word apple right you're going to write it like this you're not going to go forget about the chaotic letters all over the place you're not going to go like this right that's just hard to work with apple right be consistent in the spacing of the letters you put down be consistent in the spacing of the numbers you put down so you give yourself enough room to maneuver right you want to be able to do things in there you don't want your numbers to be staggering at different lengths and different spaces right you don't want to go two five three two you don't want to write two thousand five hundred thirty two like this it just doesn't because when you're trying to even add what are you going to do you're going to put your seven here and four and two here but why would you do that right be consistent make it easier for yourself right this is how you do long division you look at this number and you're dividing this into this whole thing so you look at the first number you go four the does four go into two does four go into two four is bigger than two so it doesn't go into two so if it doesn't go into two you can put a zero there but you don't need to you just go to the next number and you put those numbers two numbers together and you treat that as a 25 and you ask yourself how many times does four go into 25 right six times so what you do is you put your six above the five because you're using these two numbers right so how many times does four go into 25 six times because six times four is 24. so what you do as soon as you put a number up top you bring this guy and you multiply these two numbers and you put the number there okay and what you're going to do now is subtract this number from that number so minus five minus four is one and two minus two is zero and you don't have to put the zero down and then what you're going to do is you bring the three down so as soon as you get down to this number if this number is bigger than that number you did something wrong you didn't take this one high enough right let me show you how that works just before we move on anymore i'll put those numbers back up again right let's assume you didn't know your multiplication table right and you ask yourself how many times does four go into 25 and you went oh five times right again learn your multiplication table and make your life easier right let's assume you didn't know your multiplication table you ask yourself how many times does four go into 25 five times right you go five five times four is 20 you put the 20 here and then you subtract these 
5 minus 0 is 5. 2 minus 2 is 0. You got a 5 here. But 4 still goes into 5. So you have no need to bring down another number. So you just broke division. Right? You don't... You can't proceed here. Because that number is bigger than that. So what are you going to do? You can't go... Oh, 4 goes into 5 once. But where are you going to put the 1? You're still in this position. You haven't gone to the next one. So now you got to go plus 1 here. So that makes it 6. And then 4. And then 1. And then you can bring the 3 down. And then this is now 6. Oh, confusing, confusing, confusing. you got to take it to the max right off the bat. Right? Know your multiplication table. How many times does 4 go into 25? 6 times. 6 times 4 is 24. Subtract. 5 minus 4 is 1. 2 minus 2 is 0. 4 doesn't go into 1. That means we got as close as we could go without going over 25. And you can't go over this number. right? Now you need to borrow a number. Bring the 3 down. 4 goes into 13 how many times? 4 goes into 13 three times right three times four is 12 cool right you subtract these numbers three minus two is one zero one minus one is zero you're done you don't have any more numbers here so this is what you could write down right now you could write down two five oops two five three two th 253 divided by 4 is equal to 63 and the remainder is 1. Some people write it like this with the remainder of 1. That's when they're just teaching you at the beginning stages. Yo, Graham, how you doing? That's at the beginning stages of learning division. You learn this in the first few weeks, a couple of months, and then you don't do R1 again, right? Or you can go at 63 and 1 is left over, 1 divided by 4. So 253 divided by 4 is 63 and a quarter, which basically means, Dr. Biber, how you doing? Which basically means 4 goes into 253, 63 and a quarter times. Now, if you want to represent this as a decimal this is what you do you come to here you go up here and you say okay i got no more numbers that i can bring down poop right there's something we can do though we can take we can put a decimal here and as soon as we put a decimal there it's sort of like putting a decimal here right and as soon as you got a decimal there you can just add a zero because a zero after a decimal really doesn't change anything right so there's a decimal here now you can bring the zero down four goes into ten twice so you can put your two up there four times two is eight you subtract you get a two well four doesn't go into two but we already placed our decimal and if we're in a decimal position right then you can add one zero for every time you reach the spot the bottom part okay so you can only do it once per rotation when you hit here right so the zero comes down and you ask yourself how many times does four go into 20 well four goes into 20 five times Five times four is 20. You put your 20 there, you subtract, you get zero. Once you get zero, that was it. This thing went out of focus. Let's see if it'll come back, it came back. If you want, here, let me do this. Let me write this clear so you see the process, right? So we're at 20, five times four is 20, subtract, you get zero. Once you get zero, that's as far as you got you've gone you don't need to go anymore so 253 divided by 4 was 63 with a remainder of 1 that's where if we stopped at this position 
or 63 and 1 over 4 or 63.25 okay that's what it is now let's go do this any questions about this by the way on charter days or anyone else okay if not we're going to do the long division for this let's check this out seven four two and we're going to divide that into two five three two okay more difficult more difficult division no doubt right but you're going to ask yourself how many times does 742 go into two well it doesn't go into three uh go into 25 it doesn't go into 253 it doesn't 742 is bigger than 253 so you got to go all the way in all the numbers right how many times does 742 go into 2532 you can do approximations right now forget about the 32 just call this 2500 you want to get close but without going over you can call this 750 how many times does 750 go into 2500 right because if you're kicking this down by 32 and kicking this up you might go over but at least you're gonna get close right three times let's check it out so laugh out loud Tony says three times how many 742s are there in 2532 laugh out loud laugh out, laugh out loud Tony says the three so we're using all of these numbers so the three we're gonna put on top of here and we're going to multiply 3 by this. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 4 is 12. 2 and a 1. Remember, this is like doing multiplication, but on top of each other, right? 7, 4, 3. Uh, 7, 4, 2 times 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 4 is 12. 1. 3 times 7 is 21. 22. So this is 2 and 2 right now just for the exercise of it just for the exercise now I'm not going to do the multiplication like this anymore we're just going to do it here let's assume you went over right you picked too big of a number right let's kill this for a second let's assume you picked too big of a number let's assume you picked four four times two is eight four times 4 is 16 you bring the 1 over 4 times 7 is 28 plus 1 is 29 and then you got to subtract this but wait a second 2968 is bigger than 2532 you're not going to do that it's too big of a number you it's like price is right you went over oops right so if you went over depending on how much you went over by you might have gone over by a lot in this case we only went over by one so we're going to kick it down to three right and if you go down to two right if you if you thought it was twice then the number when you subtract it was going to be bigger than this number and then that doesn't work because we already talked about it right so it's three three times two is six three times four is twelve and a one three times seven is twenty one plus one is twenty two subtract now you're doing subtraction 2 minus 6 well you can't take 6 away from 2 so you borrow 1 from the 3 turn the 3 into a 2 oops into a 2 that's another reason you're going to give yourself space right because you're going to be doing things inside here so that's a 2 and the 12 2 becomes a 12 12 minus 6 is 6 2 minus 2 is 0, 5 minus 2 is 3, and 2 minus 2 is 0. So we're out of numbers, right? This doesn't go into that, rightfully so. So right now we could write our answer like this. 2, 5, 3, 2, divided by 7, 4, 2 is equal to 3 and because we don't have any more numbers to bring down 306 over 400 and 4, 742 
okay and you can reduce this fraction by the way and we could have reduced that fraction as well but we're not dealing with the reducing fractions yet until we get into fractions and prime numbers right so that's one answer and again you can reduce that fraction two goes into both of them probably more now what if you want it as a decimal right as a decimal we don't have any more numbers to bring down so we're going to put a decimal here and we're going to add a zero here so we can bring it down right now you ask yourself how many times does 742 go into 3060 well we already multiplied it by four so we know that came out to 29,000 something or 2,900 something so we know it's going to be four four times two is eight four times four is 16 bring the one up four times seven is 28 plus two is 29 zero minus eight it doesn't work convert this to a five make that a ten ten minus eight is two five minus six it doesn't work you got to borrow one from the zero but you can't borrow one from a zero. Zero doesn't have anything to give you right you got to go to the next one so you're going to borrow one from the three three becomes a two gives one to the zero zero becomes a ten well now you can borrow from the ten to kick the five into fifteen so 10 becomes a 9 and the 5 becomes a 15. 15 minus 6 is 9. 9 minus 9 is 0. 2 minus 2 is 0. But you don't need the 0 and the 0. It just confuses things, right? Whoop. Take it out. Take it out. Right? Well, we did it right because 742 doesn't go into 92. Okay? We're on this side of the decimal location, right? So that means we can add a zero. How many times does 742 go into, oh, add the zero here, 920 once. Dolphin, how are you doing? You're gonna put a one here. One times that is just 742. Again, you're subtracting. Two, zero minus two doesn't work. Borrow one from here, this becomes a 10. 10 minus two is eight. Four, 1 minus 4 doesn't work. You borrow 1 from the 9. 9 becomes an 8. 1 becomes an 11. 11 minus 4 is 7. 8 minus 7 is 1. Cool. 178. What do we do? Borrow another 0. Add another 0. How many times does 742 go into 1, 7, 8, 0? Twice. We put a 2 here. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 7 is 14. Subtract. You can't take 4 from 0. You borrow 1 from the 7. This becomes a 10. 10 minus 4 is 6. This is a 7. 7 minus 8 doesn't work. You borrow 1 from the 7. 7 becomes a 17. 17 minus 8 is 9. 6 minus 2 is... 6 minus 4 is 2. 2, 9, 6. Cool. Should we continue? You can borrow another zero. Zero. Oh, so close. Look at this. 2,960. This is 2,968. Well, we know it can't be four because four will be too high. Right? So how many times does 742 go into 2,960? Three times. Right? three let me put a barrier here three times that is the same thing as this two 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 six subtract six becomes a five that becomes a ten four three seven oh so close no cigar right and so on right out of room right and you can do this until you find a pattern right or if they say, hey, they want the answer to this to two decimal places. If they want the answer to this, you put a little approximation sign. You go 3.4, two decimal places. If you're going to round to two decimal places, you go to the one afterwards. If that number is five or more, you round up. Round the one to two, but it's not. It's two. Four or less, that remains the same. That's the decimal version of that. Does that work? I hope that's clear.
I understand it, but we'll need to practice it. Yeah, with long division, it takes practice because it inc incorporates everything, right? You're doing multiplication and you're doing subtraction, which is really addition, right? Square 1996. The unique thing why I love math is answer is always same, but the path is different to achieve it. That's where the fun is, yeah. Uh, a Vedic math freak, are you? <laughs> nice. And there are multiple ways to get to the same answer, and multiple ways you can you can manipulate numbers to give you a certain perspective on a certain situation, which shines a light on certain things. And we're going to talk about this tomorrow, by the way, gang. This week we're doing a lot of mathematics. We're gonna do math tomorrow in a big way, right? Where I'm going to give you a grand picture of how global economics works really relate in relation to geopolitics and we're gonna just look at the mathematics well we're not just looking at the mathematics but we're gonna look at look at it from a non-judgmental point of view and just talking about profits and whatnot and on Thursday we're gonna do something we're about to talk about right now uh, there are some numbers that are never meant to be uh, divisible uh, like you uh, will be in an endless loop like divide <laughs> yeah yeah continues on forever and ever and if you find a pattern right let's assume the next number is whatever it was what would that be that would be a nine uh, let's assume here let's assume you're doing a division you get this three point four one four one four one four one you continue to get four one four one four one well in mathematics you don't need to write it all that way what you would do is whatever that was repeating you put a line over it and say that number repeats or that pattern repeats right dolphin the path is important in computer science because you need to use the most efficient algorithm to have the fastest software yeah i mean just think about uh uh games from uh, sega genesis or uh nes and stuff like this what was the bits that they were able to put so many different levels in the memory the the, the small amount of memory they used up for color for texture for levels for sound in to save your thing insanity they, they were able to do some brilliant work you know, using so much so small of a space right now gang there's something we're going to do on thursday which is we're going to look at we're going to talk about investing in personal finance and it's in relation to investing in comic books it's a work of art it's a work of art mathematics is came out because people were sitting there trying to figure out how to understand the world and all of a sudden they rec saw patterns and they come up with symbols to represent things initially mathematics was done by written hand lang like writing words out and then someone at some point said you know they were doing a latin or greek or whatever the language that they were developed in right they were going okay add seven plus four right Oh my god <laughs> such a long way of saying seven plus four so someone at some point came along and said you know what add plus is redundant make that that symbol right there and the seven and four let's just use um, Arabic letters I guess that's what they're called I believe right now take a look at this I graduated last year ah congrats on uh, on Charlie days <laughs> good to be out now gang there's something we're gonna do on Thursday and it's relation to personal finance and investing and it's gonna link up with um, ASMR mathematics and our comic book stuff that we've been doing for the last six seven years right and what we're going to do i've already started making the spreadsheets we're going to take a look at the first comic book haul i did and we're going to 
take the price of the comic books that I paid and I've already created four different tables where we're looking at what the comic books are selling for on eBay right now looking at three other websites that are guides as well as a retailer that are selling comics and we're gonna take a look at return on investment right which is something you need to do and to calculate return on investment all you need is addition subtraction multiplication and division and really just subtraction and division right so I want to make a little short segment from this now since this is going to be a little short segment I don't think I've done this in the math drop and tutors session before I'm gonna pretend that we're just about to start the video again I'm gonna do a quick little intro and I'm gonna give you guys a quick lesson on return on investment and compound interest I'm excited for that stream I will be so it will be so neat Cheryl. I've been looking at the numbers so cool patterns popping up I'm loving it loving it I spent a little bit too too long on the on the computer but just so you guys know gang I'm gonna link this up to you guys in chat we're gonna talk about compound interest something that I've talked about okay I've already put out a video and we're gonna talk about return on investment and the compound interest video that we put out was basically maximizing revenue question and the return on investment ROI that we talked about is basically us taking a look at US dollar versus Canadian dollar versus Bitcoin the price fluctuations and we put this out in 2018 okay just so you know what it is uh, that we're about to talk talk about aside from that let me have a little sip and I'm gonna do a, and this is gonna take like 15 minutes maybe okay because we've done the basic algebra we should be able to do this we haven't done the exponents but we will get to it we've done the exponents in previous math videos we've done okay now hi everyone this is Chicho welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream which is actually sort of a little segment that we're doing that we're doing this as a restart in a math tutoring session drop in math tutoring session number 70 that we're doing right now and i'm just doing this little segment because we're going to need this information for videos that we're about to do regarding investing in personal finance specifically investing in personal finance in comic books in relation to calculating return on investment and annualized return on investment and extrapolating that into the future okay and just so you know if you want to follow this work I am on patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho if you want to know what this work is about which is basically layered on mathematics ev almost everything that we've done over the last 15 years is being linked up through the realm of mathematics and this is one place we're taking the next step when it comes to the comic book videos that we put out right so if you want to follow this work you can follow this work on patreon i don't put anything beyond paywalls everything's creative commons share and share alike if you believe that this work deserves your support supporting this work through patreon is a fantastic way to make sure we continue to produce what it is that we are producing and for those of you that were supporting this work on patreon thank you very much for the support and that little zombie that just popped up we are live streaming on twitch twitch.tv forward slash chicho live c-h-y-c-h-o-l-i-v-e if you want to participate in these live streams in the chat that's going to pop up here twitch is where you want to be at and for those of you who've been participating in these live streams dropping in these live streams subscribing following sharing commenting moz for being here thank you very much for the support hi i'm chad <laughs> and there's dolphin <laughs> mentioning where the chat shows up okay and aside from that we have a whole bunch of places platforms that we share information mines gab vk hello parlor gab uh twitter we do have a discord page we do upload audio to soundcloud which should be available as a podcast on um, spotify and itunes and we are uploading to sensor to bit shoot and rumble and if we have enough points we do upload to odyssey as well aside from that let's get to this little little teeny weeny bit of segment that we're about to do in this drop in math tutoring session number 70 and this video is related to a couple of other videos that we put out in uh uh, a few years ago one of them was a maximizing revenue question which is related to compound interest 
right and i'll provide the links in the description of this video and the other one was a return on investment sort of calculation video that we put out in asmr mathematics and they were both asmr math related and personal finance investing and economics related and that video regarding return on investment was basically us taking a look at the movement in relation to us dollars canadian dollar versus canadian dollars versus bitcoin because there was a lot of fluctuation happening during the cryptocurrency period at that time and people were uh sort of freaking out regarding the drops and the movements up and down and stuff like this and we sort of did a little bit of calculation and showed that even in currencies of countries specifically canadian dollars versus us dollars there was a certain five-year period there where us dollars lost 40 percent of its value relative to canadian dollars and that was sort of in relation to how bitcoin was moving at that time right so return on investment is really relativistic depending on what time frame you're looking at right now let's do this little uh, explanation of where return on investment is and return on investment is basically us trying to figure out how much money we've made regarding a certain type of investment that or bet we might have placed in certain markets right and the formula is really straightforward the formula is present price of something that you might have bought minus the price paid for whatever you might have invested in right price paid divided by price paid right? now this formula flips depending on you know what people are talking about what they refer this to and we multiply this by a hundred because we want to represent it as a percentage because we want to talk about this thing as percent growth right now what you could write this as price this should be on under price paid right there's no fraction there right some people say uh, refer to this the price paid as original price future price right present price or remind is original price however way you want to look at it but the best way to understand how this formula works is just use it right so let's assume we have the following example question right or example number one let's assume you bought you bought oops bought an item an item at let's say fifty dollars okay present price price of item is now one hundred and twenty five dollars what is your rate of return right is 125 dollars present price of item is this much now right what is your rate of return rate of return r o i rate of return right rate of return rate of return r rate of investment well we call it rate of return by rate of investment basically investment Not. present price is 125 125 price paid was 50 dollars divided by price paid fifty dollars times 100 and i usually don't include the times 100 we get the decimal and we treat that as a percentage we convert it to a percentage which basically means moving over the decimal place to two places but you can put times 100 and you got to remember that you're in percentages right 
So this becomes 125 minus 50 is 75. 75 over 50 times 100, right? Now, we need to do this division. Now, before we do this division, we can simplify this, right? What number both goes into 75 and 50, right? And we've talked a lot about simplifying fractions in series two of the language of mathematics, right? Well, 25 goes into 75 and it goes into 50. How many times does 25 go into 75? It goes three times. How many times does 25 go into 50? Twice, right? So this is really three over two times 100, right? Well, 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. 1 1.5 1 times 100. So when you multiply 1.5, 5 times, <laughs> when you multiply 1.5 times 100, how about that, Tony? 1.5 times 100 is 150. And remember, we're talking percentages. That's your percent, right? That's your rate of return 150 percent right what does that mean it means if you invested 50 dollars in something and sold it at 125 dollars you had 150 percent return on your original investment right you made a hundred percent which is your 50 dollars plus 50% more. 50% of $50 is $25. So 50 plus 25 is $75, which is what we had, 125 minus 50 is 75. So you made 150% return on your original investment rate of investment, right? ROI, rate of return, I guess. I call it rate of return, but they call it rate of interest, rate of investment, right? Is that clear? That what That's what ROI stands for, return on investment, right? So not rate of investment, return on investment. Let's call this correctly, right? Return on investment return on investment now keep this in mind so let's assume you bought an item at fifty dollars a year later your item was worth a hundred and fifty hundred and twenty five dollars right calistance hey chicho this isn't really related to the current stream, but I wasn't able to catch one recently. A while back in a stream about movies, you talked about a history of violence. I bought it on Blu-ray, but didn't get to watch it yet. Look at, oh, dude, you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. A beautiful movie. So let's assume we change this question or add a second part to it, right? I'm gonna erase this part. So the answer to the first part you bought an item at $50, present price is this. Your return on investment, question one, would have been, what's your return on investment? Question A. So I'm gonna erase the top as well, by the way. Let's erase this as well. I'm gonna copy this up here, and we already answered the first question, right? Question is, you bought an item at fifty dollars present price present price I'm gonna add a little caveat in there present price a year later a year later is now one hundred and twenty five dollars okay so I modified the question a little bit. Question A was, A was, what is your return on investment? 
and we did the calculation we got 150 percent because this is what we did return on investment was present pre, oops, pre present value minus price paid divided by price paid times 100 which equals 150 percent that's what we got right here's question two part b what will your item be worth assuming you have the same rate of investment or return on investment rate of return return on investment right what would the price of your item be 10 years from now if you assume you, you're getting the same return on investment per year right what will your item be worth oops worth if your ROI's ROI stays uh, the same the same for 10 years okay and this is your compound interest formula compound interest formula says this a is equal to p 1 plus r over n and t right that's how much money you're gonna have this is how much money you started with r is your interest or return on investment this n is the compounding period that's an n that's an n and t is the time period in years now we're not going to be compounding per year if you want to know what the compounding means reference the video that we're going to link up in the in the description here so we're just going to simplify this equation to r and t if that's the case then this is what we do we start off with 50 dollars right and we're going to assume cumulative 10 years from the time we bought at $50, not from 125, right? So our original investment is $50. One plus our rate of return or return on investment is 150%. Now, percentages, you really don't use in equations as percentages. You need to write those as decimals right you got to get rid of the percent and if you get rid of the percent 150 percent is 1.5 right okay let me make the decimal bigger so this becomes 1 plus 1.5 1.5 to the power of and this is exponents right we've done a lot of work on exponents before 10 because we're going to look 10 years into the future to the power of 10. So this is going to be 50, 2.5 to the power of 10, right? Let's see what our $50 is going to be now. It's going to be huge. Now I'm just going to bring up my calculator on my 2.5 to the power of 10. Wow, times 50 wow that's a lot of good hard-earned money at 150 percent return you're gonna have four seven six eight three seven thousand dollars right that's crazy that's a lot that seems a little too high for me is that true is that true well we can do a check right we can do a check just straight up right we started off with 50 we're looking 10 years down the road so all we got to do is multiply this by 1.5 10 times right 
So manually, you can check it. You could go 50 times 1.5. Oh, wait a second. 75. 75. Oh, yeah. And then we've got to add it, right? Because your original investment is there. So it's times 1.5 plus your original investment, which was 50, which kicks it up to 125, right? So it's not just multiplying by 1.5, it's multiply by 1.5 plus add the previous amount. So the next one is gonna be, so plus, it, it becomes a pain in the ass to do it manually, by the way, right? So plus 50, doop, that's 125 times 1.5, you get 187.5 plus 125 because that's what you started off with. So now your money here would be 212.5, right? Now you got to multiply by 1.5 again times 1.5, which is 31875 plus what was it? 212. Two one two point five. Boop. Now you're at five hundred and thirty one twenty five. Five hundred and thirty one twenty. Do this ten times. You get this. Right. Nice, nice. If only you could find a place where you can invest your money that is growing at one hundred and fifty percent per year. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet right now that's the other calculation that we're going to be doing when we're looking at personal finance and investing and return or yeah return on investment in comic books or collectibles how you do those calculations right now there's another calculation that you can do right what if this return wasn't over a one-year period what if this return was over an extended period and you want to figure out what your annualized rate of return was so you could actually do this calculation and look into the future, right? Let me explain to you what I mean here. Okay, take a look at this thing. I'm going to take this guy down. Watch this. I'm going to take this whole thing down. Now, what if instead of using words, lots of words, I'm just going to draw little arrows and stuff. There are loan sharks who charge these kinds of rates. Yeah, indeed. They're called credit card companies. <laughs> Take a look at this thing. What if, what if you invested $50, right? And in a matter of, I'm <laughs> laughing. And in a matter of six years, now the reason I'm using six years is because our first comic book haul that we did was in 2015, the video that we put out in February 2015. And we're in February 2021 right now. So six years have gone by and I've put the, sh put the spreadsheet together and it was a six year calculation where we had to figure out what the annualized rate of return was, right? That's the formula. This is the process that we're using in the spreadsheet. So just imagine you invested $50 into something and that $50 turned into $125 in six years, six years. Okay. Now what we have here now is I should write these a little nicer, right? In six years. So six years later, six years, you get 125. It's still not bad, right? You consider yourself getting good returns if you're doubling your money every seven years. In six years, we've gone up 150%. But what we want to do, because this if this was 2025, this is 2021, what if you want to figure out how much money you're going to have in 2030? How much will you have? How? much will you have in 2030 
right? This is sort of projecting, right? If you're doing your personal finance, if you're putting your money somewhere and you're getting a certain rate of return, right? Or return on investment, what you want to do is you want to do the calculus, extrapolate that out into the future so you know how much money you might have banked or how much money you owe someone if you're not banking it, you're paying it. Ouch, right? But to do this calculation, we need the yearly return rate. We need to know uh, uh, the rate of return, yearly rate of return, right? Annualized rate of return because this is over a six year period. So we want to know what the percent, the rate percent here is into 2016, right? On average, over a six year period so this percent the r is going to be the same for 2017 18 19 20 and 21 okay clear this is the way we do it we use the compound formula again wow 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 right real world math elder god how are you doing check this out our compound formula was this the amount of money you're going to have is going to be your principal P, what you started with in our case is $50 times 1 plus R to the power of T. T is your time, R is your rate of return, right? Or return on investment. P is what you start with, A is what you have or what you're going to end up with. Now, in mathematics, if you have one equation, you can solve for one unknown. If you have two unknowns, you need two equations. Three unknowns, you need three equations. Four unknowns, you need four equations. Now for us, take a look at this thing. We want to figure out what the rate of return or return on investment is going to be on a yearly basis based on this growth, right? That happened over a six year period. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna put 50 for P because that's what we started off with. We have the data for six year period. We know in six years, our $50 turned into 150. So this is our 100, 100, sorry, 125. The time frame is six and R is what we wanna calculate, right? So if we do this calculation, we can figure out what our rate of return is or return on investment is or the interest that we're getting paid back is, right? Let's do this. It's just straight up algebra. And this this is about how to move around an equal sign. And we've put a lot of videos out on this stuff, right? So what you end up doing is divide by 50, divide by 50. That gets rid of your 50 here, your first trouble spot. Basically to solve for an unknown, you undo what's being done to it. Right? And if you do anything on one side of the equation, you got to do it to the other side of the equation. That's the definition of an equation. Right? So we do this. On this side now, we got 1 plus r to the power of 6. This we already did. Well, what does this happen? What number goes into 125 and what number goes into 50? Well, 25 goes into both. 25 goes into 50 twice. 25 goes into 125 five times right okay makes sense so this is just 2.5 5 divided by 2 is 2.5 is equal to 1 plus r to the power of 6 right we still need to undo what's being done to the r well if you follow bad mass brackets exponents addition multiplication and all your stuff you do that backwards when you're solving your equation so you got to take care of the exponent first you can't take care of the one you want to get r by itself that's the point of solving an equation so what you do you take the sixth root of this right the sixth root of this kills off the power to the six right so this becomes one plus r now and this is the sixth root of two oops two point five and then what you can do is grab the one and bring it over 
So this becomes R. I'm just going to write R here because it's easier. I like my variables to be on the left side. R is equal to the sixth root of 2.5 minus 1. That's your rate of return. That's your return on investment. That's the R we're looking for. That's that R. Once we calculate that, we can calculate what our return is going to be in 2030. So all you got to do is punch this in. And by the way, this, the sixth root of 2.5 is 2.5 to the power of 1 over 6 minus 1. That's what it is, right? Because let me write this so you see it better. 6, right? We've talked a lot about exponents and radicals in pre uh, previous videos, right? So 2.5 to the power of a bracket 1, oops, divided by 6, close my bracket, equals that minus 1 we get 16 we get 0.16499 so you get let me write this down 0 0.16499 right now we're not going to go with that many decimal places we're just going to go 16 point six point point one six five we're going to round this up right so this is 0 0.165, which is equal to 16.5% annualized, annualized return on investment or rate of return. Okay. Hello, fan James Bond, right? So your return on investment would be 16.5% per year which is pretty good very good very very good right so this is annualized annualized return on investment would be this guy right now all we got to do is go back to this formula and punch in 50 year for our principal I stored all that elegance. Oh, <laughs> nice. We put in 50 here. We put in 0.165 here. What's the time frame from 2015 to 2030? 15. 15 years here. And we'll know how much money our investment will be in 2030. So let's do it. Let's kill all these guys down here. Now we're coming back to this B. Oh, B is not that. The first part. By the way, if you're doing this on a, I'm sorry, not a laugh out loud. If you're doing this on a exam at school or anything like this, you wouldn't be erasing anything. You just continue your work, right? But we're in our space. We need to erase. So your money that you're gonna have at 2030. How much money? you're going to have in 2030 let's write this out how much money you're going to have in 2030 is going to be how much you started off with which is fifty dollars one plus what was our our value it was 16.5 but you can't 16.5 percent but you're going to punch that in as point one six five right zero point one six five and we're doing the calculation up to 2030 which is 15 years from 2015 right so to the power of 15 let's figure out how much money we're going to have with a 15 50 dollar investment at a rate of return annualized rate of return of 16 point actually let's do this in red so we know 16.5 percent right here let's do this annualize annualize annual and and rate of return or return on investment is 16.5 percent right that's what we're going to punch in that's the number we're going to use 
So it's going to be, oh, I was just going to use a calculator. So this is really just 51.165 to the power of 50. Let's see what comic book we bought that's going to be worth how much. So 1.165, oops, that didn't work. 1.165 to the power of 15 is equal to 9.883 times 50 which is four hundred and ninety four dollars and fifteen cents four hundred and ninety four dollars and fifteen cents that's how much your investment would be worth in whatever item you bought at fifty dollars if you're getting an annualized rate of return or return on investment of 16.5 percent it's like saying that's how much interest you're being paid per year over a 15 year period if you had your investment for 15 years so you almost made 10 times your money okay cool i must say the interest sucked <laughs> no the interest is really good <laughs> 16.5 percent waste this appreciation indeed appreciation now if you had borrowed 50 50 dollars and you were paying 16.5 percent interest that's how much you owe them in 15 years depending on what you're buying the borrowing the money for right i just wanted to cover that because this is going to be the formulas the process we're using for the comic book videos that we're doing okay that the tables that we've created that we're going to talk about in four days and this is what we're going to be referencing uh generating ta tables for 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 some if not all of the comic book haul videos that we've made because we're going to generate all the data and take a look at because i've already started creating a table and it's really cool how some of the you know what's going on with the return on investment regarding some of the comic books even for the same runs uh so i found that interesting so it'd be really cool uh to share that okay gang um there's chat coming up if only savings account had that rate indeed uh Rami the Nosaurus. Hey, so my friend gave me gave me a problem. You start with five hundred dollars on uh, on a row. Uh, you put spending on da, 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 da. Okay, I'm gonna read these things. Sorry, I just forgot <laughs> oh some things. Help them. Okay, we'll take a look at it. Uh, but let me erase this. Let me do my little quick 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 outro of this because this segment we're going to be pulling out of this live stream so gang if you're watching this as a standalone for return on investment and uh rate of rate of investment return on investment rate of return and stuff like this compound interest which is going to be this is going to be the video that we're referencing with comic book stuff which again there's two main videos that we have that will be in the description of this video i hope you found it useful we're going to be adding more formulas to the spreadsheets and doing more calculations but for now this is pretty cool uh, because at some point we're going to start graphing the data and see what's going to happen over time regarding some of the comic books that we've bought in previous comic book calls and if you want to follow this work if you want to support this work we are on patreon and if you want to be here live during these live streams participating in discussion twitch is where you want to be at we do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on minds hello vk gap parlor not us back online and twitter we do have a discord page you can find that multiple links all over the place audios we sound upload to soundcloud and this video will be uploaded to sensor to Pichute, rumble and if you have enough dough we'll upload it to odyssey as well aside from that i'm going to go back to the chat thanks for watching this little short segment okay gang so what's this problem we're dealing with thanks for uh watching that by the way uh being patient for that it's pretty useful very handy it's what they should be teaching in every school but they're not unfortunately but i bought gme i don't have six years oh my we talked about gme uh hey so my friend gave me a, gave me a problem you start with 500 dollars 
uh, on one row you put you put spendings and on the other you put remains spent 200 remains 300 spent 100 remains 200 what <laughs> spent 50 remains 50 spent 50 remains zero why the remain why the remains is 550 i don't understand the problem brother or sister of course can you send photo you can only post uh, uh images on our discord page you can't do it here so you put 500 dollars You put five hundred dollars on a row. You put remains two hundred. You spend two hundred. Three hundred remains. Spend a hundred. Okay. So hold on. Let's let's do a visual of this. Let's do a visual of this. Let's do a visual of this. So pop up pop up. Are we gonna go down? Let's do. Let's go down instead of up. Uh, you can post photo on discord yeah you can post photo on our discord page and our discord page is here and we do have a math folder by the way uh, this court there's our discord page okay and we do have a math folder but I'll, I think I understand the problem now so you have five hundred dollars here right? this is how much you're spending spend okay so let's do it like this so you took 500 you spent 200 you got 300 left and then you spend 100 you have 200 left and then you spend 50 I posted some of my art there I drew the unmasked dog. oh I saw that Kenny that was a great drawing by the way uh, I saw that that was really good uh, remains 200 spend 50 remains 50 but from 200 if you spend 50 150 remains and then if you spend another 50 so your your error in the numbers you posted is occurs here where's my red <laughs> your error is here because you're saying you spend 50 and you you have 50 dollars left but you don't you have 150 left it's not 50. watch that but the total remains get to but we have 500 total i don't understand total remains is uh total remains is 550 uh i'm not sure where you're getting the 550 from i don't understand either <laughs> i don't understand either you don't have 550 you had 500 you spent two you had three left you spent another hundred you have 50 left uh you have 200 left you spent 50 you have 150 left right so what you've done watch this watch this king canada gaming thank you very much for the twitch prime song what you have here is you spent this that's 200 plus 100 that's 300 this is you spent that as well that's 350 and you have this much left which is 550 oh sorry not 550 which is 500 right so 150 plus 50 is 200 plus 300 is 500 that's your original amount so you don't have 550 you have 500 okay that's what it is well thanks my pleasure <laughs> we have to decipher that but it worked out it worked out okay it's just the nodes at the end the last branches you have to add up okay he was adding all the left together Oh, because he had this as 50 he thought 500 oh that's what he was doing he didn't have the one there so it was 50 so he was adding that up ah that's what no as soon as something branches off they don't count anymore they're gone they're they're gone right it's the ones at the ends of the branches that count 
Okay. Gang, that's our session. Uh, Uncharted, Day, Uncharted Ace, if you're still here, uh, on our next math stream, if you want to continue with uh, this stuff that we we're talking about, we can go into how to move around an equal sign or anyone else, gang, by the way. So I'll probably announce another math drop-in session in the next set of streams we're going to do. So probably in about a couple of weeks, we're going to do another one. Tomorrow, great stream on Charter Days, says Chicho. You have been a big help. My pleasure on Charter Days. My, my pleasure. Uh, King Canada Gaming, is it Family Day in BC too, or is it just Canada? No, it's Family Day here as well. Uh, so it's a holiday. Strangely, I made 500 pounds yesterday in pub. Aha, nice, Elder God. What did you do, flip coins for it? <laughs> Was this gambling related? We've got to do some gambling uh, math, but... We'll talk about that in the future. Right now, we're gonna talk about investing in comic books and we open. Oh, you opened sweet, sweet, good stuff, Elder God. Good stuff. Did some have uh, leave their wallet? Ha <laughs> ha. I didn't say this. I didn't say this. He says, "Gang, uh, tomorrow we're gonna be here again. I'm gonna give you a general overview of." current economic situation in the world especially in the western world in regards to the petrodollar wall street stocks monetary uh, monetary policy fiscal policy m1 how much money has been i just want to give a general overview this is something that i went over with a student of mine because he wanted to know where math is used in the real world and we actually do return on investment or calculating how much growth has occurred and stuff like this that's one reason i wanted to do this today so i'm going to give you a general overview it's going to be all over the place i'm going to do stuff like this and that's it right that's tomorrow i think starting at 9 30 a.m uh tomorrow wednesday night we're doing a current events live stream and on thursday morning at 11 a.m by that time, hopefully, I'll have all my spreadsheets set up, organized, so we can talk about investing in comic books and take a look at the rate of return or return on investment regarding the first comic book haul we ever did with the 220 Daredevil comics, a ton of Valiant comics, and a, some Bronze Age Marvel comics, including first appearances and whatnot. I missed the sub, gang. My apologies thank you very much for the subs uh you're excited to hear more awesome awesome uh, so gang my apologies if i'm missing subs and i'm missing follows and stuff like this because i really want to make sure with mathematics as soon as you take your eyes off the prize you make little silly mistakes and i do make a lot of brain farts uh, so i do appreciate the subs and the follows very much 3 rdi can i get a question answered if i have a, a tra uh, transformers movie comic there was only three issues where would i find the value for one comic of a three uh, comic only transformers movie series um go to my comic shop oh dinosaur Zorus, thank you very much for the tier one sub go to uh you can go to all over the place you can go to ebay um, we're going to talk about this on Thursday, by the way, but you can go to eBay and type in the name of the comic. And what you can do is go to the advanced search and do an advanced search under there's a little box. You can say sold items and you can see how much they're selling for. And the comics, they it varies on the grade. You'll see this in the data that we're going to share on Thursday the grade matters right if it's mint quality it sells for a lot more if it's poor quality and stuff like this right but go to eBay do a search for your comic see how much it's being sold for you can go to um, my comic shop that's it's pretty good they I, I like their website I haven't bought anything from them but I like the way they present the data and there's a lot of different price guides online I was doing spreadsheets when I was 12 yeah spreadsheets rock and roll great problem was a tricky one was a tricky one was a tricky one gang again if you want to follow this work i'm on patreon i've already said this multiple times today twice at least so we'll go through the speedy gonzalez suite thank you for the my pleasure three thirty thirty uh patreon is a good way to follow this work we are live streaming on twitch 
so if you want to participate in these live streams twitch is where you want to be at i do announce these live streams on minds hello vk gap parlor and twitter and we do have a discord page audios podcasts go on soundcloud and they're available on spotify and itunes and we will be uploading this video to sensor to bit rumble and if we have enough coins odyssey aside from that thank you for being here thank you for the questions thank you for the patience thank you for the subs thank you for the follows thank you for the discussion mods thank you for having our back elder god i have been logging my comics recently value age etc keeping me busy awesome elder god i wish i need to go through mine at some point we do at some point i promise when when i go through my comics i have enough space to go through a big room where we can sort everything out We'll do it together. It'll be like a three month project. <laughs> and gang, don't forget Free Assange, Free Assange, Free Assange. Julian Assange is a publisher and journalist that is being crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity. For more information, see wikileaks.org or check out our Julian Assange and WikiLeaks playlist. Bye, everyone.